What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Ryan Pineda Show where we talk all things business, real estate, and entrepreneurship. And today we are talking about a very common question that I get with new wholesalers. And that is, what do you do if you can't find a buyer for your deal? So this is a very common question. I actually get it on TikTok all the time. And obviously with TikTok, I have a younger audience. A lot of them are teenagers to college kids, so they don't have a lot of money and they're very concerned what's gonna happen if they try to wholesale and they can't sell the deal. But let's back up for a second and first off talk about what exactly is wholesaling. Here's the one minute breakdown. Wholesaling is flipping without actually having to buy the home. Instead of flipping the home, you're flipping the contract to purchase the home. So let's just say I get a property under contract with a seller for $100,000. And I know that my buddy who's a flipper will pay $120,000. Well, instead of me having to go and buy the property and then sell it to my buddy, I can simply just sell him the contract to the property. That way I don't have to buy it. And what I'm doing is called assigning the contract. And my buddy is going to pay me an assignment fee. And that's all it is. It's really that simple. Once I assign him the contract, he is now gonna fund the deal for $120,000. 100,000 goes to the seller, 20,000 goes to me, the property goes to him. So there's this triangle now where everyone gets what they want. And that's why a lot of young people wanna start wholesaling because you don't need any money. You don't need to go get $100,000 to buy the property. You just have to find a good deal. That's it. So the question is always, well, what happens when you get a deal, but you can't sell it? What if there's no buyer for it? And that's why a lot of people don't even start wholesaling because they're scared that they're gonna get sued. They're scared that they're gonna be forced to buy it. They're scared that they're gonna get in trouble. I don't know. But the fact is you shouldn't be because with like anything in life, there's a lot of different ways out of a contract. But before we do that, make sure you go and hit the like button so that more people can see this video. And if you want more videos like this, make sure you go subscribe to my channel. I cover a ton of different real estate topics just like this one. Now, before we get into the contract side of it, there are two reasons why your deal didn't sell. The first reason is it's not a good deal. You put it under contract for a price that was too high and nobody's willing to pay it. For most new wholesalers, that's typically the case. They don't know how to evaluate numbers yet, so they think that they have a good deal when in reality they don't. The second reason why it might not have sold is your buyer's list isn't big enough yet. Maybe you do have a really good deal, but you just don't have enough buyers yet. Now I'm not gonna cover those two topics in this video. I'll have to make other videos to do that because they're very big topics. So if you want me to make those two videos, make sure you leave a comment below about which one is most important to you. Is it getting better at evaluating deals or is it building your buyer's list? Which one do you want to know more about? All right, so we know why we couldn't sell the deal. So how do we get out of the contract so we don't get sued or we don't lose our money? Well, let's first talk about the contract. Now, everyone has a different contract. I cannot tell you what you legally have to do or what you've agreed to. So to make things simple, you can actually download my contract that I use to purchase and wholesale deals for free. All you have to do is go to futureflipper.com. It's in the link below and you can download our contracts absolutely free. And that will give you the same purchase contract we use as well as the assignment contract we use. Now I'm assuming that you're using my contract because that's all I can verify. There are two clauses you need to understand with the deal as it relates to backing out and getting your money. The first clause is the earnest money deposit. So this deposit is what you're gonna put down at the title company to basically show good faith to the seller that you're gonna buy the property. And this amount is completely negotiable. I've seen some people use $10 on a contract, $100. And then I've seen deals where people have had to put $100,000 because it's a very high-end property. So obviously the more you put down, the stronger your offer will look. But if you're just starting out, I don't see a problem putting $100 down. In fact, on a lot of our deals now, we only put $500 down down, $1,000 down. So it doesn't have to be a big amount. And honestly, most sellers don't even really know what it is. So don't go in thinking you have to put this extravagant amount of money down, but you do have to put something and the seller has to agree to that. Now, this is what you're liable for. If you don't perform on the contract, meaning you don't buy the property or find someone else to buy the property, then the seller has the right to take that money. And I'm not gonna get into how it works with them getting the money because that's a whole headache in itself. Even if they're entitled to the money, they cannot actually get it from the title company unless you sign off on it. So almost every single time an earnest money deposit is in dispute, it always has to be fought for, even if there may be a party that it clearly belongs to, because both sides have to sign off for the title company to release it. And sometimes it has to go to court over who gets it, especially if it's a big amount. Now, if we're talking a $100 earnest money deposit or something like that, at the end of the day, who cares, right? So the earnest money deposit 
is what you are liable for. And you must deposit that money to the title company when you have the signed contract and you're opening escrow. I see a lot of wholesalers who don't deposit earnest money at all. And technically their contract is void. If you don't deposit earnest money, the contract is void. A deal can still go through, but if a seller wants to back out, they have every right to do it because you didn't perform the very first thing, which is depositing earnest money. Okay, so you know what you're liable for now. But even with that earnest money deposit, there are still ways to back out of the deal. The second portion of the contract that you need to look into is the due diligence period. Now the due diligence period, like the earnest money deposit, is totally negotiable. You can make it zero days, you can make it 10 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever you and the seller agree on. Now, just like with the earnest money deposit, the bigger it is, the stronger your offer looks because you're putting more down. With a due diligence period, the shorter it is, the stronger your offer looks. If you make it for say two days, that means after two days, your earnest money deposit is going hard, meaning that it is now non-refundable. So when you're negotiating the due diligence period, make sure you have enough time to determine whether you're gonna get a buyer or not. I would say a very standard due diligence is 10 to 14 days. I don't think most sellers would have an issue with that. But if they want a shorter due diligence period, just know you better hope you have a deal or you're gonna put your earnest money deposit at risk. Now, what are you supposed to do during the due diligence period? This is your period to go get your inspections, to market the deal, look for your buyer. That's what you need to use this period for. You have to determine whether you're gonna actually buy the house or not. Okay, now let's just say your due diligence period is 10 days and you've sent it out to your buyers and the conclusion is you have it too high, meaning that you're paying too much. There's not enough of a spread. You have it for $100,000, your buyers only wanna pay $90,000. So now you have the choice. You can either back out of the deal so that you get your earnest money deposit back because you're within the due diligence period. Or the second option, which you should go for, is the renegotiation. You still have three days left, so you might as well see if the seller is willing to give you it for a lower price. So the first thing you need to do is figure out where exactly do you need to be. If you have a trustworthy buyer and you know they're gonna buy it at $90,000, then you know that's the number I need to get under to make some money. If you don't have any buyers at all and you have no idea what you're gonna be able to sell it for, then I wouldn't renegotiate because the last thing you wanna do is renegotiate and then you can't perform again and then you lose your earnest money deposit, your reputation's ruined. It's not a good thing. To be honest, we do renegotiate. Sometimes we get into a property and it's in way worse condition than we thought, or we just didn't analyze the deal properly. And so we have to renegotiate, but we know that if we get the price that we renegotiate to, we will close on the deal. We'll buy it or we'll sell it to someone else and the seller will get cashed out. You do not want to renegotiate and then not perform even after they've given you the discount. That's not good business. So before you renegotiate, make sure you have a price in mind that you know somebody will buy it for. Now let's say that you know 90,000 is good. You may go back to the seller and say, hey, Mr. Seller, I need this property for $80,000 to make the deal make sense. And they may say, why? You said you could buy it for 100. And that's where you need to have justification for why you need a reduction. It may be the inspection. If you had a contractor go in there and you can justify that, hey, it's gonna cost this much to fix the property. It's a lot more than we thought. This is why we need a reduction they're more likely to give you it. We've also gone the totally honest route where we go straight up to the seller and we say, we totally just misjudged this deal. It's not worth what we thought it was worth. We messed up. For it to make sense and for us to buy it, we need to be at 80,000. And if we can't do it, totally understand, it's totally our fault. We just didn't see the deal properly. And we've had a lot of success with renegotiations that way as well. A seller will respect you for being more honest than anything. And when a seller is presented with either a renegotiation or backing out, they may choose the renegotiation because they do need to sell the property and this may be the only chance they have to do it. So what I'll say is we don't like to renegotiate. We would rather get the deal done for what we say we can get it done for, but it is an unfortunate part of our business, either because the construction is more than we thought or we just misevaluated the deal. Okay, so there was a lot of information in that video. So to recap, number one, make sure you're using my contract. I can't guarantee anything I just said is applicable to you unless you're using my contract. So you can get that at futureflipper.com or the link below. Second thing is understand your earnest money deposit and your due diligence period. Those are the two most important things that you need to look for if you're not sure you can find a buyer for your deal. And the third thing is if you're gonna renegotiate, make sure you can honor the price that you're renegotiating for. Make sure you have a solid buyer lined up who you know will pay the price if you're able to get a price reduction. 
If you're not able to get a price reduction, simply back out of the deal, send them a cancellation, get your earnest money deposit back. And that's what happens when you don't have a buyer. If you guys liked this video and you found it informative, please make sure you go hit the like button. As I said before, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Hit that little bell notification so you get notified every single time one of my new videos drop. And make sure you go and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. You can go see all my daily activities, the behind the scenes of what we're doing and how we're negotiating with sellers and getting deals. So I hope you like this video. Take care.